Hi again, this is about video compression with Handbrake. Here's the TLDW. If you have a 10 series and video GPU or newer, you should select the video encoder as H265 NVENC, have the quality slider at 30, encode the preset at faster, audio code at MP3, and bitrate set to 192. If you don't see NVENC, update to the latest version of Handbrake. No NVIDIA GPU that supports NVENC, your CPU will do the conversion. Select video encoder as H265, have the quality slide at 30, encode the preset at ultra fast, audio codec MP3, and set bitrate to 192. These settings mostly give you the best video quality after compression, substantially shrink the file size while not taking up too much time. If you want to have a deeper dive on how I derive these numbers and what settings you can tweak based on your priorities, just stay for a while longer. The Sony A7 takes sharp 4K videos, but it eats up a lot of space because it records at a high bit rate of 100 megabits a second. That's 0.75 gigs per minute of video. The iPhone has a lower bit rate of 0.4 gigs a minute. Now let's compress it down. Take this 280 meg video for example. As it gets more compressed, more information is thrown away in order to shrink the file size. The resultant video is 4K at 30 FPS but the apparent resolution goes down and is replaced with large blocks. To reduce size further, some frames just store the difference between frames. Observe the sudden pop in quality indicating a keyframe. Every frame after that is just a delta of the keyframe until the quality pops again. Increasing compression just means to have larger blocks and fewer keyframes. Okay, this left one is obviously better than the right one. I can't tell so I'll be using Netflix's Video Multi Method Assessment Fusion or VMath to objectively measure how close the compressed video is versus the original. Now it spits out a score from 0 to 100. 100 means it's identical, 95 it's very close. You can see some differences if it goes below 95 and quality degradation is clearly visible below 80. Now here are some examples. So I will consider VMAP score greater than 95 as close enough to the original. It managed a score of 97, shrinking the file from 280 to 18 megs. That's only 6.4 the original file. Compressing it down even more will lead to a lower score. Yeah, you can crush it down to 0.5%, but is it really worth it? Smeary blocks, the floor is mush, and the orange of my inner jacket bleeds onto the coat. Focusing on the two main video codecs, H.264 and H.265. These are just two widely used compression standards, with H.265 being the newer and more efficient codec, but it's more complex and hence take longer to encode. At the same compression, H.265 gives a better VMAP score, or you can have a smaller file size at the same apparent quality. So here's a scene with some more movement instead of a stationary shot. This is me entering a busy subway. H.265 truly shines at very high compression ratios. When smaller file size is a priority, or making the most out of a very low bit rate. To adjust the level of compression, I use this slider. A large number means more compression and lower quality, and I found that anything below 30 gives a score larger than 95, and anything below 23 gives a score close to 99. So this slider essentially controls the VMAP score. The same quality number will give a smaller file size if you use H.265. Now let's talk time. It is controlled by this encoder preset slider from slow to fast. Now I've limited the video size to 25 megs to see how efficient the encoder is at different speeds. The slower you go, the computer has more time to encode by increasing the search space to more efficiently allocate bits and give better quality videos. There's a major drop in quality when ultra fast is used. Now let's add H.265, quality remains somewhat constant regardless of speed but at the same FPS it yields better results.
if I lock the quality above 97, the file size will increase as I give lesser time for the encoder to work its magic. Now I don't really know what's going on here with H.265 but what I can say is that it still results in a smaller file size than H.264 at the same speed. I'd say just use H.265 at ultra fast as it gives good quality at an appropriate speed. So to summarize, compress your videos with the H.265 codec with the ultra fast speed and the quality slider at 30 if you want smaller file size or at 24 if you prioritize quality. Now, what if you have a GPU, specifically an NVIDIA 10 series GPU or newer with NVENC? NVENC or NVIDIA Encoder does exactly what it says. Encode videos with a GPU, it dramatically speeds up the process and offloads work off of your CPU onto the GPU. Now go to presets, scroll down, click hardware encode. How much did it speed up? Quite a bit. NVENC seems to perform on par with CPU encoding, giving relatively same qualities at similar compressions. Changing the speed option also doesn't seem to have a clear trend. Faster speeds don't seem to affect file size at the same quality. What is conclusive is that it is way faster than using CPU while giving similar results. With such immense time savings, it is a no-brainer to use NVENC option if you do have a GPU that supports it. Now set it to H.265 NVENC, quality slider to 30, encode a preset at faster, and you're good to go. That's it from me, see you next time.